in this video I wanted to show you how I uh, 3D modeled and uh, printed this tablet holder for the Samsung uh, uh, SMT225 or X110. Uh, this is a pretty challenging uh, 3D print object just because of it's very flat, long and very uh, um, Mm, frequently you can end up having this model warped and then it would not uh, put flush to the wall to the glass wall um, like that so this is an example how it could be placed and uh, you see it's very minimalistic you can't even see that uh, there is a huge holder and the cable comes to it for the power through the edges of the glass uh, so let's zoom in so this is how it looks like so this is the power cable and then very minimalistic um, borders around the screen um, I think the holder just adds maybe a couple millimeters uh, around it so here you can see the tools I'm using uh, to remove the supports and uh, maybe let's uh, Let's zoom in. Um, you can see around all the edges there are supports. There are supports for the uh, cutouts uh, of uh, uh, the power for the power buttons. There is a cutout for the camera. So let's see uh, it uh, later. Um, the tool I'm using for removal. Of supports is uh, just a cheap uh, I don't know how it's called but I have sharpened its edge one of the sides with the um, sandpaper and I'm using it to scrape uh, the 3d printed objects from the uh, 3d printers bed but also it's very convenient for uh, scraping the uh, the supports very important to sharp only one edge then it's very convenient and this is a uh, this tool uh, is useful for removing uh, sharp uh, edges when it's like very flatly printed the edges are a bit sharp so yep these are the tools these cutouts are used for the uh, double-sided uh, uh, tape to glue it onto the wall this is how the tape looks like um, yeah this is uh, another model where I remove the chamfers uh, for the tape cutouts um, you can see very nicely removes uh, and the edges for, for near the screen is super minimalistic uh, like goes into sharp edge and you can see it's very nicely removed um, sometimes I use the um, large brims but then I will show you I use the mouse ears uh, at the uh, corners so we'll look into the process slicer uh, after and here you can see how it flushly puts again against the flat surface no warping at all um, yeah maybe let's go into to see things around the camera cutout the volume and power button cutouts the power supply hole um, what else pro cement black galaxy black filament looks very nice this is the power where it comes in by the way, the Prusa filament has very uh, small variation of the um, of the uh, thickness. So it's you know when you have to do the job, difficult job to remove the uh, supports. It's pretty um, pretty good that uh, it doesn't stick too much. I used 
poor quality filaments and then it used to glue together if the thicknesses are uh, very bad of the filament okay so let's switch to the uh, fusion uh, 360 that's the tool I used before uh, like many long long time ago when I started uh, having these models designed so then you can see a uh, few different models of the tablets were deprecated and then like this is the newest one x110 so yeah uh, maybe i won't go into too many details but this is the latest model um you always need to adjust the like uh, when the model changes the camera cutout the power button shifts the power supply cutout needs to be adjusted as well but everything else stays pretty much the same and uh, now let's jump into the this uh, more interesting part where i will share some things that i did for the uh in the prusa slicer and why i did it so this is the model i have loaded and then ah in these uh in the uh, in fusion 360 i made some objects which are uh, kind of sitting into the cutouts and uh, I made it uh, so yeah let's see from the bottom so it is aligned to the whole uh, uh, kind of above the bottom surface so then I'm using these uh, uh, modifiers if we look into here those modifiers is uh, hmm, it doesn't show it but it's placed in these cutout places so I changed the extrusion width uh, and made it uh, bigger actually hmm. yeah uh, I thought I made it smaller Ah, uh, yeah, I, I think the extrusion, anyways, I wanted to make them uh, stick better, so I adjusted, so then we, maybe we can see it from the bottom, so as we go from the bottom, So this is uh, the last uh, uh, maybe we can change make it like that yeah so to visualize I wanted to show the so as we go up you can see the, uh, the bottom is not there uh, not to visualizing but uh, it changes uh, so I wanted to adjust these uh, line thicknesses so I I loaded the last uh, uh, time I used this uh, slicing settings, so uh, I'm just um, a bit lost myself. But uh, anyways, the call, like the idea is that you can sometimes uh, 3D model the modifiers that you load in here to adjust the thicknesses, extrusion width for the first layer. Here, maybe I could, I should just also added the um, setting uh, like uh, about like the speed and uh, 
maybe extrusion multiplier could be added. So to make sure that these um, first lines glue better together because I was having challenges uh, that if it was going uh, longer way, it would be um, not sticking uh, to the main body of the uh, of the holder. So that's one thing. And um, okay, so this uh, uh, this modifier is something to be keeping in mind. But then the most interesting, I guess, and the uh, like most effective way of making sure it uh, stays put and does not uh, warp is putting these cylinder shapes. So I added these cylinder shapes in the corner and then I merge everything together. Okay, I select and we can merge it into one object. And uh, this is how then you can make sure you print it uh, and that it would not warp. So yeah, these are the callouts. Uh, and suggestions when printing big flat objects. Thanks for watching.